The genesis of Flinders Medical Centre was long before the first patient was admitted on the 6th of April 1976. The southern suburbs were growing at a rapid rate and the Premier of the time, Sir Thomas Playford, was under pressure to build a local hospital. Coupled with this was the need to train more doctors to meet South Australia's growing population generally. But rather than just build a hospital, a team of visionary South Australian pioneers planned something very different. What they had in mind would change the culture of academic medicine, practice and science in South Australia and beyond forever. They decided to create Australia's first medical school and public teaching hospital to be fully integrated as a single institution, a model which integrated patient care, teaching and research. Working in an environment of high inflation, dramatic social change and the introduction of a new national health scheme, Medicare, they created an ambitious, unique and groundbreaking institution. Flinders Medical Centre was born. When we started Flinders, the driving philosophy and idea behind it was that we would have what we called integration. That is, patient care, teaching and research, all combining uh, so that the curriculum, for example, the medical students would start seeing patients very early in the course instead of a traditional course where people had a couple of years before they saw patients, that everyone from the university and the hospital would be working together as one workforce, not two separate mobs. Uh, the building would be a single complex where you couldn't tell what was Flinders Medical Centre, what was Flinders School of Medicine. They were combined. In terms of function, the, one of the important things was to ensure that we did not have the separate development of adult medicine, paediatrics, obstetrics, gynaecology and mental health. They should all be together and there should be communication and, and, and uh, collaboration between the various disciplines. Well, 40 years ago the place was much smaller. There was a very strong sense of community. And, and you would know everybody. Um, all the, so I would know all the ED staff, having worked there, um, all the administrative staff, all the physicians, surgeons, would know them all. Now the place is so big it's very hard to know all of those things. But there's still a very strong atmosphere here of, of community and uh, working hard for the patients. The facility in the first months of Flinders Medical Centre was a temporary setup. They had forgotten to build the emergency department, so we adapted the VIP flats and the chapel into consulting rooms and a stretcher area. There was significant camaraderie. People were very willing to pitch in and help each other out. They were very proud of what they were about to establish. So that, I guess, assisted the keenness to really do well and uh, put on an impressive first few months in very temporary facilities. My earliest memory of Flinders was uh, the employment of a large number of staff within a short space of time in 1976. This was just a few short months before the wards were due to open and we had to employ staff to be able to support uh, the wards operations. Incredibly exciting at the time, challenging, daunting because um, many of us didn't really know what to expect. We had a number of new services and new facilities that were being introduced into a hospital for the very first time. And it was incredibly exciting to be able to see that progress from planning to commissioning. And certainly the workforce culture was a little different back in the 70s than it is today. Um, but it was incredibly important. The social aspect of the hospital uh, was incredibly important because it helped us bond at a time when we were under extreme pressure uh, and the demands were, were great. Things like happy hours on a Friday night um, and the, uh, the farts, the uh, theatrical review society that uh, just brought everyone together every year. It was, uh, it was tremendous and great fun. So in the, in the early days, every year, the Flinders Medical Centre staff and Flinders University staff were heavily involved in what was called the Flinders Amateur Review Theatrical Society, which the acronym is FARTS. And every year, from very senior staff to cleaners, to car parking attendants, everybody 
got involved, either participated in these events or were uh, members of the audience. The volunteer service for the Flinders Medical Centre has played an integral role in supporting staff, patients and visitors at Flinders Medical Centre since its inception in 1976. More than a hundred volunteers were on hand when the hospital opened its doors to the public on the 6th of April 1976. The volunteer service has raised more than $14 million, including numerous grants for equipment and support for patient care and staff development at Flinders Medical Centre, and now boasts a team of more than 600 volunteers. I've volunteered everywhere, lots of different places, but I've found this is the most friendliest and the best. I've noticed a lots of lots of changes, lots of, and it's just grown so much that I've been here 40 years and I still don't know my way around. <laughs> I got to know a mother in here very well that was having triplets, and uh, and I went to see her after she'd had them and and that, and then I bumped into her not very long ago, and she had one of the triplets with her, and they they had just turned 21. And it was just like old friends, it was really lovely and I was so thrilled to see her because she was in here for a long time and I got to know her quite well. So that's been one really outstanding thing that, from being a volunteer here. Since its inception, the Flinders Medical Centre Foundation has been supporting the team of 3,500 medical staff and 400 medical researchers who save lives every day at Flinders Medical Centre through groundbreaking research and cutting-edge practices. So far, it has raised more than $60 million for the hospital, including the $30 million Flinders Centre for Innovation in Cancer, which opened in 2012. Naturally, we aim to be the number one in health and medical research foundation in Australia. And we hope that the work that we fund will be globally competitive and, and world's best practice. But most of all, we hope that our work will lead to um, the prevention of disease, certainly the cure of it, and at the absolute minimum outcome, just better patient care. During its 40 years, Flinders Medical Centre has created many firsts. South Australia's first IVF baby was born in 1982. A year later, the world's first IVF triplets, Chinara, Aaron and Jessica Guare, arrived at Flinders Medical Centre. In 1986, the first cochlear implant in South Australia was performed. In 1992, South Australia's first liver transplant took place. In 1996, Australia's first four-year graduate entry medical course began. And in 1998, Australia's first chest pain assessment unit opened at Flinders Medical Centre. By 2009-10, we had admitted our millionth patient. And by 2014, the South Australian liver transplant unit at Flinders had completed its 300th liver transplant. Today, Flinders Medical Centre is unique in providing an extensive range of services for patients of all ages. More than 3,500 skilled staff provide services to people across Australia from Darwin in the Northern Territory to Mount Gambier in the Southeast. Our Arts in Health program is recognised as one of the best in the world. Our four decade journey has been a wonderful kaleidoscope of people, fashions and technology. But while fashions and hairstyles may have changed, the ethos that has been the cornerstone of Flinders Medical Centre, integrating patient care, teaching and research, has remained a constant Flinders has been on a journey for the last 40 years um, and it's been a steady journey. There's a good strong foundation built and we are very well positioned to deliver high quality health care on a continuing basis into the future. Happy 40th anniversary Flinders Medical Centre.